get straight to the source tonight with one of the Republicans who voted to remove Kevin McCarthy from the speaker's role. Congresswoman Nancy Mace of South Carolina joins me now. Congresswoman, first, I want to give you the opportunity tonight to respond directly to McCarthy's criticism of you during this exhaustive press conference that he had last night after you voted to oust him. Nancy Mace is a whole nother story. Okay. <laughs> Let's just be honest here. I called Nancy Mace's chief of staff yesterday. And, um, because I called the chief of staff? Well, she was on The View saying I didn't keep my words. I called her chief of staff because, I don't know, maybe I don't connect her with something else, but I just said to him, I said, can you please tell me, I don't understand, where have I not kept my word? You know what her chief of staff said? You have kept your word, 100%. But if you have a problem with the bill, I want to help you. But I can't sit there and write your entire bill and work it all the way through committee. Congresswoman, he is essentially suggesting that you were lying when you said he did not keep his word. What's your response? Well, number one, I would like to know why he called my staff rather than talk to me directly. And I'm very familiar with how to write a bill. Women in Congress can draft, write, file, and pass legislation. And so um, the facts are on our side. I was very public about what kind of deals and negotiations and legislation that he would back and support me on throughout the entirety of this year. That's all a matter of public record, including the timing of those pieces of legislation. And to date, none of those things actually came true. And so my focus today is to focus on the future, to focus on the opportunity here that we have as a party, and as a country to come together and find a speaker who will tell the truth, find a speaker who will be honest and keep their word. Because you can't tell conservatives one thing, tell moderates another, tell Democrats something else. That's not leadership, and that's not bu building consensus if you tell everybody different things. And so we have a lot of work to do. We've got to roll up our sleeves, and I'm very much looking forward to the speaker's race next week. I will meet with every candidate that throws their hat in the ring. This is a real opportunity for us to do what we said we were going to do. We promised a budget and 12 separate spending bills. We promised to be responsible with taxpayer dollars. And this is our opportunity to show that kind of leadership next week. Yeah, I mean, he even said that he would give your chief of staff a job if he got fired over, over those comments of what McCarthy said. I mean, have you... Have you spoken to your chief of staff? Have you cleared up what they actually my, told my Kevin chief and I, my chief and I, yeah, my chief and I were, were drinking last night. He had a beer. I had a glass of wine at Bull Feathers on First Street last night, and we're just fine. I didn't hear the conversation, and to me, it doesn't really matter what words were exchanged. He did not reach out to me, and I want to look forward. I want to bring people together, bring the party together, and find a leader that we can all get behind. Do what we told the American people pick a speaker that will keep their word because at the bare minimum, that's what we should be doing for the American people. Well, your bill on the backlog of rape kits in the U.S., it has gotten out of committee. It has not gotten a, a full floor House vote. I mean, the question, though, is do you mm -hmm. think that whoever is the next speaker, be it Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise, anyone else who, who can actually get to 218, will be more moderate than, than McCarthy? I think that the most important thing is that we get someone who's going to be honest, who will keep their word. And if we say we're going to follow the law, there's a law from 1974, the Budget Impact and Control Act, that says we're supposed to have a budget, we're supposed to have 12 separate up or down spending bills. That's good for the country. It's also good for both sides of the aisle because leadership will often, as you know, Caitlin, they skirt the law, they do these CRs and the omnibuses. They don't want to give the power back to the people. A select few, the most powerful, have all the say and they take that power away from the people when they avoid the law, when they avoid doing those spending bills. When we do those bills, they're vetted through committee. They're vetted with amendments. Both sides get to have a say in the amendment process before they're voted on. You have time to read them. And it's a full House process. That is how the Constitution works, and it's good for everybody. And that's not an unreasonable sort of ask. And I'm, of course, advocating for women's issues. I'm advocating for responsible governance and oversight, things that make a lot of sense to everybody on both sides of the yeah, because of your vote, are you concerned that you'll be expelled from the Republican conference or, or kicked off your committees? Well, it's certainly the, the eight of us that voted this way. I mean, if you want to have the gavel, if you want to move forward united, you're going to need our votes. And I think if we look backward and, and punish people based on their principles, that's only going to further divide our conference. We have a lot of work to do. We promised the American people we would deliver 
results, and we need to, to do that. I don't judge my colleagues for their votes or for what their values are or their principles are. And I've always said, Caitlin, I've said it on your show, I am willing to work with anyone who's willing to work with me, period. So you're not worried about and it. And that means moving the ball forward. I, I am not today. I mean, they, they can do what they want to do. I've been in a lot of fights. I was the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. I am not afraid of standing on principle and my values. And I will say, Caitlin, the establishment is coming after me. I've had a lot of threats about my fundraising. I'm asking people to go to my website at nancymace.org to help me uh, to, to show their support because there, there are yeah. folks that are coming after me tonight. I'm glad you brought that up because back in January when there were the marathon votes for Kevin McCarthy to get this job, he was fighting to take the gavel. This is something that you said. Mm -hmm. Matt Gates is a fraud. Every time he voted against Kevin McCarthy last week, he sent out a fundraising email. Uh, what you saw last week was a constitutional process diminished by those kinds of political actions. Uh, of course, now here we are in October. You and Congressman Gates are, are in agreement on at least ousting McCarthy. You were on a podcast together today. You yourself the have been irony, fundraising uh, off that vote. How do you, mm -hmm. how do you explain that to, to now? Well, I have not been fundraising off of this every step of the way. I made my decision last night. I, I made the decision to fundraise over the last 24 hours because of the threats that I have received over fundraising and money drying up, which is why I need help. The people, the establishment is coming after me. I've gotten a lot of threats from different groups and different members that they will withhold fundraising no matter what. And I do need help from the people. And that was a decision that I made late last night because of everything that was going on. And it is a genuine ask. And if they want, if, if people want to support the effort, they can go to nancymace.org. Well, that podcast was one that is done by Steve Bannon. Of course, you once voted to hold him in contempt of Congress, which he brought up today. Mm -hmm. Is he now advising you? No, nobody. I mean, I, I have consultants, but he is not one of them. I often will make my decisions on my own volition. Um, I don't take pressure from the outside world or outside groups generally. I'm not beholden to anyone anywhere, not in D.C. I'm only beholden to the people. Um, and I make decisions on legislation, on votes generally on my own. But overall, uh, when you look at what you were saying in January, if someone looks at what you said then, what you say now, mm -hmm. and if a, if a critic says that you are being hypocritical of that, how do you how do you respond to them? I'm taking it from all sides right now. And because of the threats that I've been receiving over the last couple of weeks, it finally reached a point last night where I was like, you know what, I'm going to let people that I need that know that I need help and communicate that this was not a calculated decision. This was a decision based on the threats that I've been receiving in the last three or so weeks from fellow members, from different groups around Washington and around the country. And I got to stand up and defend myself, defend my vote. And, and it takes money to do that. Um, and People can help me if they go to nancymace.org. So you don't think it's hypocritical that you criticized someone like the congressman for, for fundraising off of his fight against McCarthy back in January, but you're fundraising off of after casting your vote last night to, to boot McCarthy from his job? I waited until after that vote. Some people might might call it that. I'm calling it the truth and what is actually going on. And this was not a politically calculated decision. I didn't make this vote for political reasons. I did it out of principle because I felt this is the right move for the country. I want us to follow the law. I want us to be responsible with spending. But that has come, I have learned, in a very raw way over the last 24 hours that that comes with severe consequences. Are you getting a lot of backlash for, for that vote? Believe in. I am getting backlash from from everywhere right now, but I'm also getting a lot of support. But you know, I've I've had folks call and hang up on me today. I've been cursed out. Someone dropped an f bomb on me when I made the vote last night. You could hear the gasp on the floor for standing up for what I believe in. But I've learned in a very lonely way that standing up for principle can also sometimes be a little painful and quite lonely. Um, I've learned that very quickly in the last 24 hours. When it comes to who is going to, to be the next speaker. One thing that we've heard from some members, Republicans, is that they want to reform this whole motion to vacate, that it can be one vote, as we saw, to, to move to oust the speaker. Do you think that should stay a House rule? It, it should stay as a House rule. I mean, this has been a House rule. This has been precedent for over 100 years until Nancy Pelosi changed the House rules when she was in charge. But by and large, this has been around for over 100 years rarely used, um, and, is, and there is precedent in the House for having it as 
a rule. And again, this was a commitment that was made earlier this year. And from my perspective, I care about women's issues. I care about balancing the budget and I care about following the law and following our rules. And it's been around for a very long time and we should keep it. Do you think it's ridiculous when some of your colleagues are floating the idea of Trump being House Speaker when he can't be the House Speaker? Well, I, for, yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand that, why we would push a, a candidate that cannot uh, be speaker right now. But, you know, that's, that's their fight. <laughs> it's not mine. But I'm focused on who can be our speaker next week. That is a, a valuable um, endeavor over the next couple of days. I'm going to meet with every candidate that throws their hat in the ring. And I want to make sure that we get united next week. We do it quickly. And we have a lot of work to do. Certainly, that is true. Of course, it is paralyzed right now. Congressman Nancy Mace, it's going to be a busy week. Thank you for your time tonight.